Jason Titley. I play bluegrass guitar. This is a bluegrass style of guitar playing. Bluegrass originates from America and was invented by a mandolin player called Bill Monroe in the 40s. Uh, very much influenced by the uh, black music that was going on at the time with jazz and blues, um, plus Appalachian music which originated over here in Scotland and in Ireland and uh, was shipped over to America many, many moons ago. Um, it's a really interesting style of music for a musician. It's very much a musician's music, actually, because um, most people that listen to it play it or fall in love with it and play it. So uh, quite often when you do concerts, you'll find that most of your audience are players themselves, which can be quite challenging. So I was just doing a little uh, bit of cross picking there, which is um, a style of uh, guitar playing where I'm using a plectrum, which is, this is actually, believe it or not, this is made out of tortoise shell, but I'm assured that the tortoise that died for it had a pick donor card, so we're fine. So um, you hold it in this hand and you use it to uh, pick the strings. So flat picking is the, is the name of the actual style. So it comes from using a flat pick like this against the strings. Um, so you can go. And cross picking is where you cross pick. So you go. Now, one of the reasons I love bluegrass um, is because it's a music that's very much played live uh, in sessions uh, with other musicians. So it's not a solitary thing. It can be singer songwriters, etc. Um, and it's very solitary when you're practicing, which I've done a lot of over the years, quite a lot of. Um, uh, but playing with other people is actually the, the main reason that I do it. It's a social, social style of music. Um, like jazz or, or you know any of the like folk music when they get together and play in pubs and stuff. We do the same in bluegrass, uh, but very much so it's a usual lineup. Now the difference between bluegrass and say folk music is folk music they learn a tune and they all play the tune all together. In bluegrass music we play the tune, there's always a tune, but we get a chance to show off. So we can do a little bit of what we call a break or a solo um, in the piece. And so you can imagine there's usually about five or six people in a bluegrass lineup. You have a double bass, which is playing the, uh, the bass line. So which is like your, uh, your double bass, your bass pedal on your drum kit. Then you have a mandolin, which is a tiny little instrument that plays tiny little chords like, like that. Um, and that's the offbeat, so that could be your snare drum. Uh, and then you have a fiddle player who's playing all the lovely glissando stuff in between, so filling that spectrum. Um, and you have a banjo player who just makes a, a racket, to be quite honest, but it's a very good racket. And uh, they tend to be the what people know bluegrass music for, if you think about deliverance and things like that. Um, and Earl Scruggs was the father of, of bluegrass banjo. And he came up with the, the playing with three fingers. So they use a three finger roll. And they have um, these finger picks on. Uh, so they can play very fast with very little effort. Whereas I have one little plectrum. And I have to try and keep up with them, which is quite difficult. Um, so that's the sort of general bluegrass lineup. You also think of a Dobro, which tends to sit like this. Um, on your lap and with a very high action and you have a steel which is a piece of uh, literally steel that you you move up and down and it's like a slide guitar um, and that's a Dobro or a national steel guitar steel strings um, have I left anyone out I don't think so and then there's me then there's a guitar player so my job in a, in a five-piece bluegrass band is to play the sort of the choppy stuff the fill a little bit of bass and a little bit of uh, chop. So you have, uh, for example, you have a bass, the bass end is going and the choppy bit is that. So I'm doing both jobs really. So that's my job. Um, and and then I get to, play, to pick, so I get to play the tunes. So for example, a tune might be... Um, like that, 
that's a tune. Um, so the tune is... around with it which you can't really do in any with many other genres of music except I suppose you can with jazz but acoustic wise folk music oh you get frowned at if you do that so you I could mess around with it I could go and that's my break that's my solo that's my and what I love about that is that it's putting my personality into the music and my kind of ideas and thinking and creativity so um, yeah uh, sometimes you do play the tune together uh, everyone plays it together and that's quite amazing as well uh, but a lot of the time really we're all in this music to, to be able to do our own breaks and uh, play with other people and the sound of everyone together is extraordinary so um, <clears throat> I'll go back to the tune I was just starting to play which I can't remember the name of at the moment bizarrely I've been playing it for 30 years That's a little bit of flat picking, cross picking for you. Uh, also, just to mention this guitar, this is a Martin D28, 1973 or 4, 74, I think, which actually is not a very good year for Martins um, because they uh, they didn't have their usual guitar builder there. Um, someone else was doing them, but I mean, I love it. Uh, I bought this, it was my first proper guitar when I was 18, I think, 17, 18, and I worked all the hours I could doing overtime to, um, to buy it, and I bought it at £800, which was a bargain, actually. I don't know what it's worth now, quite a lot more than that. Um, if you were to buy one of these new, a D, Martin D28, and considering that now a lot of them are quite are factory made and um, they're not quite hand built like this one was, it would still set you back probably two and a half thousand pounds. So. And the good thing about guitars is, well made guitars, is that they tend to get more value the older they get. It's one of the very few things that you can, uh, you can buy which will increase uh, in value the older it gets and the more it's played. Um, they do wear out quite often and I've had two refrets on this in the time I've had it considering I bought it when I was 18, 19 years old so um, I've had it a long time, 55 now and it's had two refrets which means these bars here are the frets and they've had to, they, they wear down and then you start wearing away the fretboard which is here and uh, you get big divots in them so you have to have that shaved down as well. Uh, so I've had a couple of there. At the moment it's in good fettle. It's had a bridge reset at some point because it, it was so getting on. I mean this is, you know, over 30 years old. Um, and uh, that can be a kill or cure really. It can either completely ruin the guitar if it's not done properly or it can completely bring it back to life. And I was very lucky it brought it back to life. This is not my main guitar. My main guitar is a Collins D1 which sits on my, uh, in, in a case at home and is the one I play all the time. This sits up on the wall and you can tell because it's covered in dog dust from our living room where it's hanging on the wall. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely guitar. D28 is kind of the, the guitar for bluegrass players. Anyone that plays bluegrass will own a Martin or will have owned a Martin or will hopefully own a Martin at some point. Uh, but there's a lot of other good makers out there now and it used to be just Martins really. That was the goal to have a Martin or a Gibson banjo. Uh, but now these, this is, um, yeah, this is a, an old gal that's gone very mellow over the years. 
so I don't really play it in a live setting anymore because it can't keep up with banjos and dog pros and double basses. It's too mellow and too lovely, but it makes some lovely sounds. Um, but it's also still got the crack, you know. The So yeah, there you go. That is my um, bluegrass guitar in 20 minutes. I hope <laughs> you found it interesting. Uh, you can check out more at uh, www.jasontitley.com. And um, I do give lessons. If you want a bluegrass lesson, I can give you a bluegrass lesson. There you go. So thanks for tuning in. Lens is not the right lens. I reckon we got plenty.